I'm a big fan of Jujutsu Kaisen, as you might be able to tell from my channel, but there is one thing that has always annoyed me. Something that is kind of a small issue, but at the same time makes the story so much worse than it could be. And that one thing is the pacing. This is an issue that I know a lot of people have brought up before, but it really is annoying a lot of times. Before I started watching season 1 when it first came out, my friend who recommended it to me told me it was basically like the TikTok of anime. And after I started watching it, I must say it is the most accurate accurate analogy to describe this show and more specifically its pacing. Because everything in this show moves so goddamn quick, especially at the start, it feels like it's trying to tick off as many boxes on a list it can. Now eventually you get used to it, it kind of becomes a part of the show's identity but some scenes in particular get really jarring, especially in very important scenes, like death scenes. And the first death in the series happens to be one that, in my opinion, falls victim to this pacing issue, and that is Yuji's grandpa's death. This is the character that gives Yuji his main motivation and goal of the entire show, which is to help others. Something I think ends up being a really good motivation, and something that defines Yuji. But despite this, to me, at least in the beginning, this motivation didn't seem as strong as it did later on. Which I think has a lot to do with his grandpa dying 9 minutes into the first episode and coming off as a bit rushed. Again, I think the motivation ends up working really well eventually, but I didn't really get to connect much to his grandpa, or at all really, so him being the person to tell him this doesn't work as well as it could have if we spend more time with him. Obviously Yuji has spent a lot of time with him off screen, but the audience hasn't. Now I do think character deaths are done better in the second season in terms of pacing. For example, Nanami's death is really given time to breathe and has this beautifully animated sequence of him at the beach, perfectly encapsulating his character and his struggle. It's basically perfect. However, this is quite different in the manga. In the anime, it takes 10 minutes of Nanami fighting curses and walking on the beach before Mahito catches him. In the manga, this is 6 pages. He walks a little bit, slices up 2 curses, then Mahito catches him. Now, I don't know how it would have been to read this part for the first time, but I would imagine it wouldn't be as good of an experience as the anime. And I think this because in the manga, I don't think I would have had enough time to properly process the damage Nanami took from Jogo. As I'm trying to fully process everything and the state that Nanami is in and what he's doing, Mahito will catch him. Then a few pages later, he will kill him. This is what I mean with too fast pacing. The audience needs to be able to properly think about and process things, especially if they're really important. If not, it can be really overwhelming. Now, you might think that the fast pacing works really well, and that's totally fine. After all, I'm sure that's a pretty big reason as to why Jujutsu Kaisen is as popular as it is in the first place. But to me, this can get really jarring. For example, another death scene where I think this issue is very clear is Junpei's death. Junpei up to this point had almost been the main character of the arc, yet the part where he dies, aka when he gets turned into whatever the hell this is, what is that? What is that? Wait, it is very underwhelming. This is the scene where he gets transformed. This doesn't really seem like a major character death to me, especially compared to some of the others in the series. The actual transformation scene is so quick, it just sort of happens. And this is a really bad moment for Yuji. After all, his main goal is to help people. And here, a person dies on his watch, someone who he had been actively trying to save. I think it would have been much better if he slowly transformed, showing first his arms, then his legs, and then his face, maybe some reaction shots of Yuji whilst it's happening, and then finally when he fully transforms. Here, he just kind of plops out. The camera angle of when he does fully transform is also just so boring. I mean, he even falls out of frame. The background music is completely standard. You can barely even hear it, and it just happens at a random part of the song. Now, some of this might not be as much related to the pacing and more so directing, but the director's job is to make it like the manga. And in the manga, it's the exact same. Even shorter of a sequence, actually. And you could say it's not as much of a dramatic moment yet because Yuji still has hope that Sukuna can save him, but when the audience sees Junpei transform into this, they are not thinking of that possibility at all. In fact, I don't even know if we knew that he had the ability to do that at this point in the story. And so the scene of Sukuna and Mahito laughing at Yuji ends up being more focused on Yuji and how evil curses can be, and little to do with Junpei himself. After this, Junpei gets a single page where he officially dies, and then we move on to the fight. It might seem like I'm being 
being overly critical or nitpicking, and that's true, I am. As an isolated incident, this is not a huge deal at all, but when these things happen all the time and is present in every scene in the show, it becomes a big issue. And season 2 definitely isn't prone to this issue either, and this is very apparent with Mechamaru's death. Mechamaru has a pretty long and intense fight with the main antagonists after it's revealed that he is the traitor. These are two massive things happening in the story, and yet the scene after his death is revealed, he's not mentioned at all. In fact, no one even brings him up or talks about him until his AI shows up and brings himself up. It's treated as if it wasn't important to the story, when it really was. And yes, his classmates obviously have a really nice scene like 10 episodes later when they react to his death, but this is too late. I would have liked to see how they and the Tokyo students had reacted to him being the traitor as soon as they found out, but we don't. We just move on to the next part of the story immediately. Now in a sense, I actually really like this because it further shows how far apart he was from his classmates and showed how isolated he was, but I doubt the author did that intentionally. And the reason I say that is because it's something that happens very often, not just with death scenes, but particularly when we transition from arc to arc. A lot of arcs in the show have a very abrupt and sudden start and end, and I think this contributes to the pacing issue. The last arc in season 1 might be the worst offender of this. This arc just starts one episode, with no foreshadowing or anything, and the entire context of the plot has to be explained at the beginning of the episode. It has villains we have never seen before this, even in the episode before when we saw all the villains sitting together, they were not present. Even Choso wasn't in the scene, when he is always with them in the Shibuya arc. Just a few quick scenes showing these guys off and showing the three victims at the bridge or when they got killed by the curse spirit could have gone a long way. Now I actually don't mind that this arc starts off like this without foreshadowing or any nice transition because it gives more of a feel that Yuji and the guys are like detectives showing up at the crime scene trying to solve the case. This was also how it was for the first two arcs in the show but I think when every arc is like this, it gets really jarring. Now this issue isn't something that is enough to make me dislike the show, but it does put a sour taste in my mouth in some scenes. Which is really unfortunate because had this been fixed, the story would have been, you know, so much better. I remember watching a Totally Not Mark video where he showed a quote of the author saying this. When I start a manga series, I don't really have a theme or principles in mind. I begin by thinking about things like, these twists would be interesting, or these characters might be cool, or this scene would be amazing. And this quote totally makes sense in the context of this transition issue. It's like the author is more focused on the big things he wants to do and less about how to piece those things together. Another part of the story that I think suffers from this pacing issue is the main trio's friendship. Because these three people are treated like best friends, even though they have barely spent any time with each other. At the end of season one, they walk off to go shopping or something, and it's like this really happy scene. But like when you think about what happened earlier in the season, this doesn't really make any sense. I mean, Yuji was dead like half of the season. Before he died, they had like barely spent any time with each other. And when he comes back from the dead, this is their reaction. <laughs> They don't really seem like best friends, do they? They basically don't interact with each other at all during the exchange event. Like Yuji basically develops a deeper friendship with Todo in this exchange event than he does with these guys in the entire season. And then we have the last arc, which I guess is something, but I feel like not enough to really warrant this scene. I mean, they were separated from Todoroki in this final fight. And again, I just think this comes back to pacing. Had these people spent more time with each other and had more meaningful interactions with each other, I would have liked to see a lot more. I mean, I love Mechamaru's fight and his death. It's one of my favorite parts of the story, but had his death been, you know, paced a little bit better and the transition been better, I would have liked it even more. And you have to check out this video to hear why I liked Mechamaru's death so much.